Greetings, this is Benji. Welcome to another random web development screencast. Uh, we're going to jump into it today with HTML preprocessing using Haml. Uh, HTML preprocessor is uh, an abstraction on HTML, some code that you can write that um, when compiled will turn into beautiful HTML. So let's just jump into the deep end. I'm going to use Haml to demonstrate uh, preprocessing for HTML today. There's also Jade or Slim or several others um, uh, that you could try out. Uh, I'm most familiar with Haml, so here's what it looks like. We're just going to jump right in. I'm going to make a header element, and I'm going to do an H1 that says welcome. And that's going to compile to HTML that looks like this. So we use a percentage sign instead of angle brackets to designate an HTML element. You can add a class simply by adding period in the class name. I'll demonstrate that that works here by saying uh, dot intro color tomato red. That shows that that class is working. Now an interesting note, if we were to do a div element and give it a class name, uh, let's write some lore maps in here to fill this in uh, so we can see some class applied to it. Uh, if we give it a class name, uh, then we do not need to actually specify the element. Um, and I'll show you why. So let's give it a class of description. And we'll put in the CSS to prove that that's actually working. Um, and the reason why we would be able to delete this um, div and just leave dot description is because Haml is going to assume if we don't specify an element that it is a div. So we will delete that and just leave dot description. And as you can see, it still works. And um, that is probably just because div is the most common element you'd see in an HTML tree. So anytime I put something like dot etc, a class name here, we'll put some more text down here in a small element, it's going to know that this um, dot etc is just a, a div element because I haven't specified any. So that's the default. And let's make that a color of aqua, which is going to be nice and readable, right? Okay, um, so I want to get into um, indentation here. You notice we don't have closing tags. So let's uh, generate a nav uh, menu here. Uh, this demonstrates uh, indentation uh, pretty well. And if we can look at what it compiles to in HTML, which is going to be something like what you'd expect. Now. Uh, the reason we don't need closing tags in Haml is because we nest elements through indentation. So we have unordered lists uh, nested within nav. And we have list items nested within an ordered list and the links nested within list items. If I was to unindent this, it's no longer nested within the list item. You can see it's not in the, in the unordered list anymore. And if we look at the HTML, it's very clear that list item is now empty. And I will re-nest it, and it's back. Um, so you have to be very careful with indentation, um, especially let's say you have a body tag. Uh, and here's everything in the body tag, but let's just change one small thing, and we now have a completely empty body uh, element. So it's a very easy mistake to, to make. You have to be super careful with indentation. Again, this is the reason we do not need um, closing tags. Um, because it's indented and Haml is able to figure out what elements are with, uh, within other elements. Now let's just demonstrate here that you can also indent uh, text, which at the moment is inlined. If I put this on a new line and indent it to spaces, it knows that this hello text belongs to the H2 above it because it's nested there. Um, now here's an interesting um, syntax. This is um, very Ruby syntax um, because Haml has its roots in, in Ruby. As a matter of fact, it is Ruby syntax. Um, it may look weird to you. Um, you've got a um, URL string here um, with a what we call a hash rocket pointing at it from a href symbol. Uh, now there are a couple altern alternatives to this if it looks weird. You can also write it in the newer JSON style uh, hash 
that we use in Ruby more often these days, it still works. If you want to go more HTML style, why not um, just write it as an equal, get rid of the symbol mark and uh, use parentheses if you don't like curly brackets and that also works. All right, I want to get into some of the more interesting things you can do with an HTML preprocessor, uh, specifically writing uh, programmatical code. Uh, so I can write a dash um, to write Ruby code here, and I'm going to write a variable list, um, which equals an array of words, I'll do three, which are three different colors, and um, not going to get into the finer um, syntax here, but let's skip over that for now. But just know this is an array of words named list. I'll do an unordered list. And let's say we want to print those uh, colors as each a list item. Uh, so I can do list uh, each do, let's do a variable named color for each that's going to represent each instance of uh, each item in the array. And print that color for each list item nest it properly and there we go um, red yellow orange now let's do something a little bit more realistic uh, uh, more realistic demonstration of what data you might want to put into your view here let's say we had uh, an array of posts now I'm just gonna paste this in this is uh, three different blog post examples that I'm gonna paste in as a Ruby hash it's gonna for all uh, intents and purposes look like uh, JSON, but it is a Ruby hash. And um, I'm going to say posts for each of those. Let's do something. Um, what do we want to do? Well, let's do the title of each one and an H2 element. So, uh, post title. We'll grab that from the hash. And then we'll grab the. Um, the description or uh, the text yeah, of each entry. And there's my three blog posts. Uh, very easily represented with um, very little code. Now I've um, pasted that blog post data directly into my HTML, uh, my Haml document, but of course if we were using a backend, this would represent dynamic data that's um, coming from a server. All right, um, you can use an online converter. There's several of them, rather easy to find, which will let you convert regular HTML documents to Haml code. It's an easy way to jump into it if you don't know the syntax. I've done that here for a large document. Um, and you can see how easy it is to browse the HTML tree of elements and text, which is why I enjoy um, using a preprocessor like Haml. At least for me, I feel like I can see things uh, easier. I'm just pasting in some CSS here because I can't stand unstyled HTML. That's why I'm a full stack developer. <laughs> and something we can get into another time is CSS preprocessors and why those are so good. But um, we've already um, done long enough for now, so we'll just leave it off at uh, HTML preprocessing. And again, there are other preprocessors out there, such as Slim, uh, that also have online converters. I'll convert that here and see what Slim looks like. Uh, and we'll paste it in here. Switch our preprocessor to Slim, of course. And see that that works as well. We don't have all the percentage signs now. But you can see we've traded that in for a bunch of these pipe symbols beside each of, of the text. Um, so slightly different syntax. Uh, here you need that pipe symbol for the text because it will think Benji is the tag element otherwise. Um, but uh, also very very similar as in line as well as uh, embedded nested uh, with indentation. Uh, you know so uh, some people prefer Slim over Haml, and that's fine. Um, some people like Jade. Uh, you know, they're all a bit different, but they accomplish the same goal uh, in the end, I believe. Uh, so I would encourage you to just try out uh, a few of them and then, you know, just stick to the one you like. Or use none, if that's your preference. Thanks for um, staying with me for the duration of this, and... Um, uh, next time, maybe we'll do one on uh, CSS preprocessors. <laughs>